There's a lot of confusion as to what bullying is, and in today's discussion, we're going to give you a clearer understanding of what bullying is and help you identify if your child is bullying other children or if your child is being bullied. The current definition of bullying is a specific type of aggressive behavior in which a child or group of children with more power, for example, if they're bigger, older, or have more friends, harms another child. Bullying is usually repeated, and bullying takes on many forms, which includes hitting, kicking, calling mean names, as well as social exclusion. Jamie, I'd like to ask you the first question. How do I know if my child is being bullied? Well, children that are victimized by their peers within the context of a bully-victim relationship are frequent recipients of aggressive behavior. If your child has recently been involved in an aggressive episode and is now fearful of school, doesn't want to go to school, and has unexplained changes in their sleep, appetite, and unexplained crying episodes, these are some of the indications that your child may be experiencing uh, bullying. So really look at, look at the, the cues from your, from your child. Exactly. How do I know if my child is bullying other children? Well, bullying behavior is a repeated episode of aggressive behavior among peers. And so if your child is engaged in these repeated episodes and you have reports from teachers or other adults that these kinds of episodes are taking place, that's one indication. In addition, the sibling relationship is often a very important training ground for peer relationships. So if your child is engaged in bullying behaviors with a younger sibling, for example, that's usually a good indication that something might be going on with regards to bullying. Jamie, can bullying really happen in preschool? Yes, in fact, bullying can occur in children as young as the age of three. Bullying in early childhood is different than at older uh, developmental periods in that the identity of the bully is usually known and the behaviors are rather direct and in your face. This allows teachers and parents and other adults the opportunity to more easily identify the behaviors and then eventually intervene. Joe, what behaviors should parents look out for? If your somatic complaints like stomach ache or changes in any kind of, uh, of, of normal patterns. And in addition, parents really need to uh, be hyper vigilant about their child's appearance. Mm. If the child is coming home with tattered clothing or, or physical bruises, certainly that's a, an indication of, uh, of something going on and, and, and warrants attention from the parent. For children who are um, bullying, I think it's in addition to what Jamie has already indicated that the behavior towards not only siblings, but if there are pets in the home, mm. uh, aggression towards pets Ooh, in the home can be a, a, a sign Sorry. of um, hyperaggressive behavior that may uh, indicate a child being a bully. Joe, there's been a lot of media attention on these horrific cases of bullying, which may lead people to think that it's getting worse and it's happening much more frequently. Has there been an explosion? Are we dealing with an, ep an epidemic? Well, the studies that have been following trends in, in bullying incidents and prevalence have not indicated an, a rise in bullying behavior. And certainly there's been a great deal more attention, particularly in the media. But I think that uh, parents can be reassured that this does not represent suddenly an explosion in bullying behavior. In fact, these behaviors have been around since time immemorial. So, so what is really happening and what we're all experiencing is uh, an increased attention and certainly uh, new forms of expression, mm. um, particularly with the abuse of technology and uh, cyberbullying. But the media could also help bring to us an awareness so that we could be much more vigilant about making observations about our children's behaviors. Absolutely. In, in this case, I think the attention is good. Great. Yeah, I think a lot of people want to know, what is the overall impact of bullying on the family? It can really cause a lot of distress for the parents. Sure. And it can cause a lot of angry feelings toward the school or the daycare center or even the other parents of the children, if they know them, who are involved in the bullying situation. And I think it can make parents feel like they've failed, mm. that they aren't doing something right by their right. children. So it can be very frustrating. They might feel that the school or the daycare center isn't doing enough mm -hmm. to make it stop. Mm -hmm. um, it can just be a very stressful situation for the whole family. And Mia, what is the effect of bullying on a school? 
Well, bullying can have a very corrosive effect on a school environment. So when there are schools where the adults in the school are either ignoring or they're sort of tolerating bullying behavior, and when the other children are sort of viewing it as normal behavior, that can really impact the school environment in a negative way. And it makes it more difficult for children to feel connected to that school. Mm -hmm. And it can make, them, make it very uh, difficult for them to feel safe exactly. at school. Mm -hmm. And we know that when children do not feel connected to school and that they do not feel safe at school, then they have a harder time learning. Catherine, what's the difference between teasing and bullying? And is teasing bullying? Yeah, teasing is actually very common in children's play relationships. Similar to how adults would use sarcasm to bond or connect with someone, teasing can play a similar type of function in children's relationships. But the challenge is there's a bit of a line between where teasing ends and where bullying begins. Mm -hmm. Things that are different about teasing is that it would happen in a mutual or friendly type of relationship. It tends to happen occasionally rather than repeated. Mm -hmm. Also, when it, there's a relationship among friends and one might tease the other, it typically is a back and forth rather than a power dynamic where one person takes over control and really wants to humiliate or put someone down. That's where we start to see the teasing turning into bullying. So you see a difference between teasing, whereas bullying focuses more about that power dynamic and that shift and children really can't get control or take back that relationship. Catherine, is name calling a form of bullying? Yes, name calling can be a form of bullying if it happens in that repeated fashion where there's that power differential. So occasionally kids will get called a name by someone and if it's just an isolated event, it's something that perhaps the adult could correct or the child could let the other individual know that they don't want to be called that name. But if we start to see this recurrent pattern, especially if it's a name that puts the child down and makes them feel badly, mm -hmm. uh, that's really where we would start to see the overlap. Right. And once again, it, it's the intent to, to harm, mm -hmm. the intent to hurt. Mm -hmm. It's crucial for children to go to a trusted adult mm -hmm. when they see that a friend is in trouble. Mm -hmm. But then the question comes up, what's the distinction, the difference between reporting and tattling? Trudy, can you, can you take this one? Tattling is when you're trying to get someone in trouble and no one is getting hurt physically or emotionally. Reporting is when you're trying to help someone out of trouble because someone is getting hurt physically or emotionally. Thank you. And I think that's also another important message for the adults in children's lives to have that distinction and to truly listen to a child and not just write it off as, oh, they're, they're, they're being a tattletale. I agree wholeheartedly. It's very important for adults to understand um, the distinction between tattling and reporting because when children are reporting it takes a lot of courage for them sure. to do it and so the key question I would ask as an adult is is someone getting hurt? hurt. Good. That's a very important point. Mm -hmm. I think all adults should, should, right. should take note.